and welcome back. My name is Amy if you've never met and this is Perky Plants and this video is literally starting off where a previous one has ended. I'm not completely sure if um, the Equigenera unboxing video and this acclimation video are going to be like back to back like after each other or if there's going to be another video in the middle. Depends on my editing speed I suppose. Um, <laughs> So welcome back, thank you for being here. If you haven't watched the unboxing video yet, I recommend watching that one first and then coming back to this one. Thank you. Um, so, as I said, this one's literally starting off where I left <laughs> the last one. So these two, there are two plants in here and they are currently just sat in water and I want to get them into water and hydrogen peroxide and I want to get this one into water and hydrogen peroxide too. So that's what we're going to do first. Um, I have another jar here with just some water in at the moment. Probably should have turned up a little bit between, between ending that video and starting this one, but I haven't. So um, yeah, this is just hydrogen peroxide, 3%. Are you stable enough for me to just pour into you? And I'm just gonna pour it in, probably do like a half and half kind of mix. <laughs> no exact measurements going on. And I'm gonna put the Anthurium Nigrolaminin GG in there. I wonder if I can hold, you may or may not be able to see, but there's lots of little fizzy bubbles coming off and that is the hydrogen peroxide doing its job. So that's, that's happy in there. I would quite like to get the entire thing in actually, seeing as it is just a dump, but um, I don't know if I can, I might put, Let's see if I can put some water. I've got, I've got my drinking water, so I'm going to put some of that in there. Just to top it up to try and get more of, more of the top of the stump in, is what I was looking for. Right. Yeah, that's fizzing up nicely. Cool. I'm going to put that down there. Okay. And then I'm going to put some hydrogen peroxide into this one. I did empty out some water from there. Um, put some of that in there. I'm going to do the same, add in a little bit more water. There we go. Probably should have just <laughs> taken the plant out first. Um, oh jeez, this one's really big. Okay, I'm hoping I can fit both of these in here. Hope and I don't know what I was gonna say. Okay. I'm just squeezing next to each other. That would be great if you could. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. That's those two in there. Oh my god. Oh jeez. Do you want to see the roots up close on this one? Oh. You might be able to see it a bit better, actually. You can see all the bubbles fizzing. Fizzing up to the surface. Obviously I'm moving it around as well. Okay. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is give the leaves a clean. Um, obviously that one down there doesn't have any leaves. The window's open and it's really, it's quite windy today. And there are plants blowing everywhere. Um, so yeah, that one down there doesn't have any leaves. So it's just these two that need their leaves clean. Oh my God. 
gonna move. I'm gonna close the window a little bit. <laughs> okay. That one doesn't have any leaves. These do. <laughs> so I'm gonna clean these leaves. Um, what am I gonna use to clean them? I'm gonna tidy up a little bit first. I have a microfiber cloth, a bowl of lukewarm, very, very diluted soap, um, and then I have my spray bottle with some SB plant invigorator in it, um, and I'm going to spray the leaves after. So I'm just going to get a little bit of the warm water. I'm literally just going to wipe all of the leaves, front and back. Um, I haven't seen any pests on these. Obviously that doesn't mean that there isn't any and they will kind of stay quarantined away from my plants for a period of time. Um, I'm not really sure where. Last time I imported, I put them in like, um, like, you know, this big kind of clear plastic boxes. I put them in one of those. So I might do that again. Um, if it'll fit. Ooh, I, you probably won't be able to see, but the hydrogen peroxide mix is, is really bubbling. You know, like fizzy bubbles at the top and everything. I don't know why I'm trying to show you, that's ridiculous, don't do that. Follow me. Um, yeah, so I'm hoping with cleaning the leaves like this, I'm hoping if there are any pests, I can remove slash kill them. And also to get rid of some of the like, got white marks on them. Probably just, I don't know, oh my God. Spray cleaner or I don't know, fertilizer or I don't know, whatever the process is before they get sent over here. Where are you? Oh, you're on the top of my mind. Did I miss them? Missed me. Oh god. Okay. Right, so done all of the and all of the Trunky Cola. <laughs> That's such a great name. Then all of the Trunky Cola leaves. Now I'll do the Argerios Dachium Yasuni leaves. Um, and they are a little bit more, like they're not velvety, but they are a little bit more velvety than the other two. I mean, obviously the Nigro Laminum hasn't got any leaves left. But they were they were quite waxy those leaves and then these are kind of um, quite st i don't know how i'd describe them they're they're not velvety they're definitely stiff um yeah don't know how to describe those they're nice though my mic and put it near these parents that put their babies on the phone. <laughs> Not that that's an awful thing to do, obviously, but... <laughs> Just had to wait until I was done, so...
Okay. Right. I'm gonna pop that on the floor because knowing me, I will knock that off. Okay. Now I know some people when they import plants they do like a full like almost like a bath like they fully soak them I haven't ever done that um, I'm not saying I wouldn't ever do it I just I haven't ever felt the need to do it I just try and remove what I can like I try and make arriving here as as unstressful as possible for the plant and then like if there's kind of stuff that needs to happen that can wait so I guess like picking off petioles and stuff I'll wait until the plants kind of recovered a little bit although I'm just lying completely because I've clearly just done that so much um so these are still really bubbling I'm going to leave them in here for a little bit I'm going to spray them down and just kind of let them sit and rehydrate um and be treated. I feel like this one could use like a little bit of like a, a scrape. I won't spray this one, it just seems a little bit silly. It's basically all in the hydrogen peroxide. But I am gonna spray this one. I'm gonna spray it. Oh, this table's gonna be ruined anyway, isn't it? Spray it. Yeah. Um, I really like this sprayer. Like you hold it down to turn it on and it's a continual mist um it works really well i'm just gonna angle it slightly is there anything over there i don't want to get in wet because it does it does really coat everything It really does make everything soaking wet. <laughs> Get a towel out. Um, okay, that's all I'm gonna do for now. I'm gonna probably let them sit in the um, hydrogen peroxide water mix. Maybe what's the time? Maybe for like another half an hour or so, and then I will come back and put them in whatever substrate I decide to put them in. I'll see you then. Bye. Dang, look at that. I'm to dry a bit. Woo. Hey, and we're back. So, these plants have been sat in the hydrogen peroxide for maybe about an hour now. Um, and I'm just going to get them into some substrate. So I've chosen to go with moss with a bit of bark, like orchid bark, um, which is a bit of a weird combination. I think I've never really done that combination before. I wanted to do um, like a moss and pumice pond kind of mix, but I'm running really low on pumice and pond and I just I just can't basically um, so I'm gonna do some bark instead I've got three pots that are all the same size that I think will they will fit let's get started um, okay so my moss it would be great if I had something that I could mix this in but I don't do I do I Give me a minute. Okay, I have a mixing bowl that is on the small side, but it's something. I need to get some more of those like plastic kind of tote box things. Cause that would make this stuff way easier. Okay. Just breaking up the moss a little bit cause there's some kind of chunks of it in here.
And I'm gonna sprinkle in some bark. I never measure anything out. I don't know, I don't actually know anybody that does, that kind of like measures everything out exactly. I mean, fair play to you if you do. You have way more patience than I do. I eyeball everything. Okay. Okay, right. Okay, first pop. Oh, it's still so fuzzy, like fuzzy. It's still bubbling quite a bit, but so I'm just, we're just gonna do this. Um, okay. So I'm gonna try and just scrape off. I should get my scraper. Okay. So I'm just gonna scrape off much as the like dead tissue as I can. Okay. Okay. There, all of the roots that are attached do look really, really good. Like, some of them probably will die off, but they actually look pretty good considering. So I'm just gonna pop it in there, in the moss and bark mix and fill around it. Um, I thought the root system on this one was a bit bigger actually. I probably could have used a bit of a smaller pot, but I just won't fill it all the way up. Um, might end up repotting it, possibly. I might not, I don't know. Looks like I am filling it with. I'm just trying to cover up the whole of the like stem area where those roots were. Okay, that's one done. <laughs> Look how ridiculous that looks. <laughs> okay, right, one done. And I've got these two pots, so same thing. Just put some at the bottom. And let's do the Trunky Cola next, which is this one. Apparently it doesn't want to come out. Oh god. Okay, let's take them both out. This is an accident waiting to happen, isn't it? Oh my god. Oh jeez. Okay. Oh, it's dripping. It's dripping everywhere. Right. <laughs> Just gonna hang that over there. There wasn't all that much that needed to come off of this one. Like scraping wise. Just gonna try and get rid of some of these old sheaths. I think. that much that needs to come off right now like nothing that's gonna spread like no kind of rot or anything cool okay this root system is absolutely ginormous I'll try and like lie it on top of itself
probably do with like a bit of a deeper pot really but I can't I haven't really got a deeper pot for you right now. Like, I could probably find you a taller glass vessel, maybe? I don't know. Right. I'll just get you situated for now. Obviously, these aren't the permanent homes for these. It's just kind of while they settle in and rest for a little bit. This is how I like to my imports I like to kind of clean them stress them out as little as possible and then in like so it probably won't be until Friday next week I'll I'll repot them hopefully unless they've done like a massive downward kind of turn my aim will be to repot them on Friday next week into the actual substrate I want to keep them in which means I probably will need to buy some more substrate. This one's not going to stand up. I'm going to put it down here and lean it against the sofa and it can just lean for a minute. Right. Looks like I'm going to need some more moss in my life. Um, what I will probably do is uh, because this moss is really quite damp so I won't um, get it really wet what I might do is um, spray it with some like uh, yeah maybe a little bit of fertilizer water um, just to add a little bit of moisture to it but I don't need to give it like a full-on water water Again, this one hasn't got very much that needs scraping off particularly, if anything. There's just like um, a bit of an old sheath again that I'm going to get rid of. Yeah. Oof, okay, this, I'm going to angle this aerial route into this substrate. And so I did something like this for my last um, Equigenera import, which was my Anthurium Rockweenum and my Anthurium Pallidiflorum. I kind of did like a moss heavy initial substrate before moving them into their more permanent substrate. Similar process, kind of let them rest and settle in and just calm down, I guess, from their from the journey over here and the stress of being kind of in shipment and yeah for about a week let them rest and then I and then I pot them up into their more like permanent substrate so that's I'm gonna it works really well for them I'm gonna do the same thing again um, and yeah I will continue filming it this won't be the end of this video Okay, what I'm going to do next is get them kind of set up in their like, acclimation bin, hopefully, if they fit. And I will show you that and then I will see you probably, probably next Friday for me, but obviously in a minute for you. Um, and I will show you the process of how I pot them up into their permanent homes and their permanent substrates. I'll see you then. Okay, so we have a bit of an issue in that the... The Argerio Statum, yeah, that one <laughs> it doesn't fit in the box I wanted to put them in. So the the Trunticola just about fits, and obviously the Nigro Laminum have no issue with fitting. Mm, so normally what I would do is kind of put them in there and then shut the box and just let them sit in that nice humidity in there. It would get bright light through the box. And I'm not really sure what to do now. It just have to not be in a box because I haven't got a box big enough for it. So I might just stand it next to the box. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that now.
Okay. That's that's kind of how they're fitting for now. Um, I'll see you in the next bit of the video. Well, hello. I am back. It's been approximately like 0 0.3 of a second for you, but it's been a whole week and a day for me. So today is Saturday the 27th of August. Um, I was supposed to do this video yesterday, but I didn't. So the plants have been either in their bin or out in the open for over a week now. Um, and I want to get them, today the aim is to get them into like their permanent kind of homes. Um, or semi-permanent, I suppose. It's very warm in here. So I'm going to try and get this bit done as quick as possible because I'm already really warm. So let's just get to it. I'm going to start with um, the Arge. I'm just going to call it Arge. This is the one that didn't fit in the bin, so it's been completely out in the open and obviously not massively happy. We are losing a leaf here, which I'm gonna take off. And the new leaf that had was coming in like as like when it was shipped is really not happy, um, which is expected. It's probably not really gonna do much more than that. The others seem, I mean, pretty stable. This one looks like it could could be on its way out um yeah definitely on its way out probably on its way out um this one looks all right and so does this one and obviously the newest one's really not looking very happy um so today i'm going to be taking them out of the substrate checking the roots taking off any roots that have died i'm expecting some dead roots whatever's in there i think i'm going to pop put it into the substrate that I've got next to me regardless of whether it's like rootless or loads of roots and that substrate is this one Let's see if I can show you I have no idea if you can see that <laughs> um, it's basically the same kind of substrate that you will have seen if you've watched my repot with me no drainage video with the anthuriums um, it's pawn, pumice, lecker, um, orchid bark, coconut husk, um, and I think that's it. So basically a kind of semi-hydro mix. And then I'm gonna put a layer of the black lecker balls at the bottom because I like the aesthetic. And also it, it's where I keep the water level. <laughs> Not just so it's pretty. Um, so I'm going to start, this jar used to have pond in it, and now it doesn't. Sorry if this makes a light or bracket. Ooh, I should get my great white. This is like the perfect time to be using great white. It is a really good kind of stimulant for roots to grow, as well as new leaves. Ooh, okay, so I'm going to get some of this in there as well. And then let's see where these roots are at. I know this is like a really tall glass, but this is a really tall plant. And I think with this leaf gone especially, and I think this one probably is dying off, like these roots will do well to be kind of closer to the substrate. I don't know if they'll be fully submerged, but... We will find out. I can't actually remember what these roots really look like. You, you'll you definitely have a better memory because you'll have just seen it. They're not looking great, I don't think. Is this a root? That's a root. Is it an alive root though? That's the question. Oh, that one's definitely not. Do I, have I got stuff up here? Okay, so I'm gonna just go through and chop off all of the really bad roots.
Okay. So not amazing, but I think they're going to be okay. Oh, that's sad. You've just snapped. Whoops, that was definitely my doing, wasn't it? Right, let's take you off. It's interesting that it had two leaves in one section. Is that like one really small node? So I'm going to sprinkle in a little bit of great white, a little bit, like I think I've definitely been using more than I needed to. I might even sprinkle some onto the roots, probably too much. Hopefully, I think I can guide these down, eventually I probably can. Um, it's really annoying. Can you even see? I really wish this leaf faced this way because these two face this way. I might, like, I'm going to put these into the cabinet and I might um, just conveniently put, put this up against the back wall and force this leaf to go this way round. Sorry. Okay, and I'm just going to fill up, fill up around. Ooh. Oh yeah, that is looking nice. I am going to fill it up probably above to the words. I am going to fill it up up until this kind of leaf just so hopefully, I don't know if you can see like there is like a little hopefully beginning of a root here and you know the closer that is to the substrate the more likely it's going to root so I'm hoping I can just encourage some more root growth brilliant um okay so that's that one what I will do is I will fill the water up to here I think it looks Ridiculous, but all right. So yeah, got that one done. Sorry if you can hear that motorbike. Right, okay, let's see the ones that are actually in. I don't even want to look at the GG. Although I have got an update for you about that. Right, Chunky Cola, how are you doing? I don't know which way you can see best. Okay. Okay, so this leaf looks like it's dying off, but the others look pretty, pretty solid, to be honest. I mean, the new leaf hasn't really changed much. And it probably, it might not, it might just halt there. Um, because this one's so long as well, I didn't really know what to put it in. I was looking for another one of those glass jars, but um, I realized this one's got all these little leaves down here. So I picked, oh my goodness. I've picked this jar up, which isn't, I think it's okay. I was gonna say it's not really ideal because when it comes to unpotting, it's hard to get them out, but actually not using, I think if it was a soil, it'd be hard to get it out, but I think using the substrate that I am going to use is actually going to be okay. So, ooh, I'm going to do what I did with Old Arge and get the next vessel ready. Where I end up doing... I feel like I remember that one had a really big root system, didn't it? We'll see if it's going to fit. I don't know if it will, you, you know? I don't know. Okay. I feel like I say okay a lot, don't I? Yeah, that's something I need to work on. Alright. I don't think it's going to have a big root system anymore. Sure, there's some that are still green. 
Let me see if I can get you a bit closer, like to this section, because it's quite a good example. You see there's some that are like green here that are still alive, but then there are loads of these ones that literally look, they're so thin, they look like, um, almost like paper. So they definitely need to come off. Okay, I think I'm going to leave that like that. Yeah, I think. If some of these roots die off in the next substrate, like it's not the biggest deal, honestly. I promise. Ooh. That one's definitely been growing. Look. It's a bit stuck to like a bit of bark. I hope that focuses. I can't tell what it is, but. That's definitely a nice new root in there. If that's what the healthy roots look like, then I can assume pretty much all of this is dead because they're not all that green. There's a really loud noise outside. I'm really sorry if you can hear that. Do I need to pause? This is part of the reason why I haven't started a YouTube channel until now because I live next to somewhere that's it's really quite noisy like it's not a construction site but like it kind of is at the same time and like I've got the mic so I'm hoping that it's not picking up that noise a lot but if it is that's a, that's a real drone to be talking over and I have no idea how long they're going to be making that noise for right I'm just going to carry on if when it comes to editing I can hear that noise and it's really <sighs> okay so the drone stopped but they're just still being really noisy like I really really hope I just can't wait to move out honestly mm. I can't wait to move out not that like I love this I love this home that we've had for such a long time but I'm ready, I'm ready to not have all that noise. Um, okay. What I was gonna say is if, if, you, if the noise is really bad, I'll just fast forward it. You know what I need what I'm gonna need to do is I'm gonna need to um, make some poles for these aren't I if I want them to mature at all a chopstick Can you tell I'm not really a fan of like moss poles <laughs> Not really their biggest fan. Just stay there. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna have to make some lazy boy poles. I'm gonna have to find out where people buy that plastic stuff. But okay, that's the uh, Trunky Cola. Same as the Arj. <laughs> I'll fill it up with water. Can't even see where the layer of Lekka is. That was useless. Um, I'm going to fill it up with water to about here. And it will also go in my cabinet. Let's put that down there. And now, now on to the Nigro Laminin GG. And I have got an update for you about her not regarding her specifically she really doesn't look good um shut up i 
mic, all I, I'm just hoping that my mic is at least muting some of that. It's stopped again. Okay, quickly, the Nigra, Nigra Lemon and Gigi, so basically the update is when DPT hadn't delivered the package, I'd tried speaking to them and they were like, no, we can't give you any updates, please ask your seller. Um, and then like a different team through DPT will be able to speak to the seller about what's like what the holdup's been. So I'd emailed Equigenera and um, I didn't actually, hear, I think I'd emailed them on like the Friday, like last Friday, um, and they hadn't got back to me. They, and obviously it got delivered on Saturday last week. So they emailed back on Monday, um, apologizing for the delay and said that through their tracking, it looked like it had been delivered. Like, could I confirm that? And I said, replied saying, yeah, it's been delivered, but um, one of the pan pants, one of the plants definitely struggled with being stuck in the shipping for longer than expected. Basically one of the plants had struggled and um, like I was disappointed and they asked for a photo. So this person I was speaking to was somebody called Ronald. Shout out to Ronald. Um, I sent Ronald a photo of this stump and he said that he was really sorry that happened and that they could offer a replacement. Um, I wasn't expecting them to offer the replacement. I was kind of expecting them to be like, it's okay, it'll regrow, yada, 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 do this, this, and this. Um, but they, he didn't suggest that at all. He literally just said that he, they would offer a replacement. And um, he said that the replacement could be added to another order or I could like pay for, I think pay, I, I could just get the Nigra Lamb and the GT, but it'd be included, in, I'd have to pay for the shipping, I think. But I was actually planning on ordering um, I was like, I was going to place another order anyway, um, so that's what I did. I placed another order. Um, I've got, I think it was another three anthuriums that I ordered. And I, once I placed the order, I kind of like screenshotted the order and gave, like sent that to Ronald and gave him my order number. And he replied with a copy of my new order form that had the GG on it and it had like no cost next to it and just said that it's been confirmed. So that, I mean, I think that was pretty good customer service to be honest. He was really fast at replying. He um, he did say that, like I was expecting it to come in the September shipment, but he said, I'm just gonna start working on this. He said that, the, um, that they're not shipping out to the UK in September, so that's really disappointing and if you've placed an order with Equigenera and you're expecting your plants these fruits still look great <laughs> compared to the other ones what on earth so the leaves are like pathetic but the roots are indestructible on this plant clearly um yeah if you've placed an order and you're expecting it in September I don't think you're going to get it it sounds like they're not shipping to the UK in September at all which is really sad. Um, so I will be getting those plants in October. So again, third time I've ordered, ordered from Equigenera and it'll be the third time that I've got my plants two months after the order. <laughs> so it's not great, but they're coming. So, and they've replaced my Gigi, which I'm really glad about because I don't really know how It's not soft. This top bit's definitely like that. Is not going to grow anything. That's dead. I just don't know. I don't know if this is going to do anything. I really don't. So yeah, the majority of the roots look amazing. This one up here is definitely dyed, but the rest of them look really, really good. I was not expecting that that off and I'm gonna chop you here like there are some green kind of I don't know if you see that here there are some green shoots which kind of look like they could be new growth points but I don't know if I want to get my hopes up. I don't 
Oh, I was going to put that back in that pot. Could it go into a smaller pot? It could, couldn't it? I'm going to go and get a different pot to put this back in. Okay, I'm going to put it in this pot. I am going to put some of the moss that it was in back in the bottom. So this isn't a no drainage pot. So I'm just going to use some moss at the bottom to... What I'm going to do is put like a little... Um... What is the word? Like a drip tray? Just to hold like a little bit of water just to keep that moss a bit moist and then... Um... that'll be able, like the rest of the substrate will be able to suck up. Okay. Put a little bit of great white in there. Maybe that will encourage some new growth points. So, I mean, it doesn't really need help with the roots. And then what I will do is put a little bit of moss just around this top section as well and I'll use the mister to keep it kind of damp just to, I don't want those roots at the top to be drying out and quite like the stump to try and stay I mean not moist but um, I don't know what I'm trying to say so that's that that's all of them that's done okay um how am I gonna keep you so I think even even though the cabinet holds the humidity like around um, I mean kind of between 60 and 80 percent depending on what the weather is outside so like today today 73 is quite a warm day but when it's like rainy drizzly outside it's more in the 80s um, and when it was really really hot it was like hitting 60s and lower I think I'm wondering whether I want to put this in like a like a dome or a cloche or something just to keep in that extra humidity. So I might do that. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is tidy up and I will get the anthuriums kind of in the cabinet um, and set up and I will show you what they look like in there. I should have said actually that they... like. I didn't see any pests on them. Like I will do another really thorough double check before I put them into the cabinet, but I haven't seen anything. I'm pretty sure they're pest free. Okay, I'm gonna do that. I'll see you in a minute. Just gonna put some water in them. Thought I'd film it. Feel of these cells. There you go, filling up the bottom bit there. So that will all soak up into the rest of the substrate. And this one. Can you see the water line there? Oh, it's murky. <laughs> it's because of the mico. I don't mind that. Okay, right. Let's see if I can get them set up. So this is what the cabinet looks like currently. So I've got the, the two shelves in there, so the three different levels. And what I was thinking is keeping this bottom bit and then taking this glass shelf out here, because I think the anthurium could fit, and kind of just creating a bit of an anthurium space. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, so I've just taken the shelf out. Um, and I'm going to position the Anthurium Arge and the Anthurium Chunky Cola into the cabinet. I'm thinking I'd like Arge in that corner there. Oh my goodness, he still, <laughs> he still doesn't fit. <laughs> Oh no. I mean, he fits enough for now. Jeez. Um, I, 
don't, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna have to chop that one up. I don't think I'm gonna be able to keep it um, as it is. And then the Trunky Cola. Oh. This one really doesn't want to stay stood up. Just gonna put you there. Can you just stay? Oh my goodness. Just stay, please. Definitely. Oh, do you know what I'm gonna get? No. Oh. My cousin got me these magnetic shelves, and I'm I've tried out the magnetic bit, and I'm really impressed with how well they stick. So I'm just gonna put. Oh, did you hear that? I'm gonna put my cream back in there on there. It is so. It's really, really secure. I'm very impressed. And I'm gonna put my. Yucky back there as well, and I have been keeping a thrips predatory mite sachet next to them just because ages ago now the Doriaki um, sort of lush hybrid did have thrips, um, it hasn't had them that I've seen in a very long time, but um, I'm still just keeping, keeping them, keeping the sachet there. I'm gonna put this little cutie in here, she doesn't need to be in this anymore. I might actually put the this was a gift to me from Sarah, um, Sarah's Planty Home and Alina, whose handle is Little Plant Mother, I think. She's also on YouTube, I'll link her channel. They gave me this for my birthday. This is an Anthurium Dress Leary, I think. Pretty sure. Anthurium Dress Leary. So I'm going to put, I need to repot it. <laughs> Let's put that one on there. Go to centre stage. Um, I'm going to put the GG into that zone, oh, on its own, so that can go there, and that's as much as I'm going to do now because I am going to be doing like a full um, cabinet shuffle and kind of filming the process for for a video. Um, what am I, I'm so rambly today, jeez. Basically I'm gonna film doing all this properly and I'm basically gonna make this whole section an anthurium section. I'm not gonna do that today because that was a different video. Um, yeah. Sorry, that was funky, wasn't it? Okay, that's that. I'm gonna, while I'm here, I'm gonna spray my queen. Let's give them all a bit of a spray actually. Why not? Okay. Right, the bottom of the cabinet looks chaotic. Okay, I think that's gonna be it for this Equigenera acclimation video for now. I will you know, obviously you'll see those plants again, you'll see how well they do. If anything like dramatic happens, I will let you know. Um, thank you for watching. Good luck with all of your import acclimations if you've been doing them alongside me. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks. No, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Give this video a thumbs up. <laughs> Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, if you felt it was helpful. Um, let me know if you do anything different in your acclimation process and please subscribe if you haven't already. Okay. I'll see you in my next one. Thank you for watching. Bye.